What's hey. up, everybody? <laughs> How's it going, John? Good, good. How are you, Ruben? Good, man. Good, good. So happy to, to have you here with me. Very, very well, happy. Thanks. thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, my pleasure. My, believe me, my pleasure, man. Um, hello to everybody. And before I forget, I don't want to forget, um, a happy Mother's Day and best wishes to all of your mothers and to those of you who may be mothers watching. So there you have that. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, people uh, who watch who, who are married at least um, and who have kids. So there you go. Um, happy Mother's Day to all of you. And of course, to all of you, my wonderful Rewind watchers, um, the, those of you who are mothers as well, please, uh, 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 I extend a nice uh, welcome and a thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, and I'm sorry to anybody who, because it's Mother's Day, uh, cannot tune in tonight. So there you go. Um, I wanted to say, everyone, that um, as excited as I am to have John here tonight, um, I got to give you the sad, disappointing, I'm sure for all of you, news that for the first time ever, well, ever, in 11 months that I've been doing this, John is the first guest that I've had who has given me a time limit. So, therefore... <laughs> I want you all to know in advance, because I know you guys like to fool around a lot, and it, that's what takes up a lot of the time on my show. I want you to know that it's not personal, but I may have to skip over a lot of the joking around and stuff, because we, we got to get through it. It's a full show and tell episode. We got a full, you know, 20, 21 pieces. I think it's a total of like 29 different slides I've had to make. Wow. Um, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so for that, those reasons... Um, I want to make sure that we get through all the art. And I will say quickly to those of you who are here, hello, uh, number one Marvel fan, Mr. Red Jack. I read your messages earlier, so I know you're the first guy to, all, uh, of course, make fun of me. Uh, where was it again? Uh, happy Mother's Day to Miss Vivian. I know you have your hands full with a young daughter. Well, she's turning 14. She's not that young anymore. Uh, and also your other child, Ruben. Thank you so much, Mr. Red Jack. That's so uh, very, very lovely of you. <laughs> <laughs> when I get a chance, I will hit you back with another uh, an insult of my own. Uh, but uh, good evening to you, Dino. Good to see you, sir. Uh, CJ, as always. Oh, yeah. Oh, mama. Mama, I'm coming home. Marcus, Marcus what's up? Uh, the Rickster. Sorry. The Rickster. And, um, yeah, so there she is. I was wondering if she had come in yet. Um, so happy Mother's Day again to you, hon. And uh, just so in case you're wondering, uh, John, Vivian is my wife. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank yeah. you for being Vivian. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Love the villains and cosmic mo the most myself. Hasn't been easy in finding pieces you like. Well, well, hopefully John will I'll, I'll tell you, you know, to reveal some of how he has gone about um, acquiring his villainous pieces. Hey, Maki Poo Poo, good to see you, sir. Carlitos, good to see you again. Wow, you're, you're starting to show up like more frequently now, man. Good to see you. Uh, what's up, Mike? Popping in to say Snibier. <laughs> <laughs> this is an inside joke from last week, uh, John. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, S uh, was it? Was that it? Sni was that it, Marcus? Sni oh, no, you said Snyberg. Yeah, yeah, Snyberg. You, yeah, you made the second J silent yeah i think it's snyberg but whatever we'll say it like peter does snyberg okay hello hello to you jason and john good evening to you oh <laughs> karen darling karen so everyone just really quick wanted you to know karen reached out to me what was it a couple of weeks ago karen um, after I, I spent a few minutes talking about you know where are all the females in the hobby how come they don't show up um, there, I know they exist, but they don't show up. And then she, she reached out to me, um, uh, well, not on the show, uh, and, and said, you know, there, there, Ruben, there, there's, there's more females than you would think. Um, so everybody, um, please welcome my new friend, Karen, um, to the show. And if you can, please check out her name is her, her, she has her own, she just started a brand new um, page, um, a channel, I should say, a YouTube channel called Karen's Pages, where she does 
Um, like most YouTubers, she does pre-recorded content and of the, you know, 12 minute length variety. So very easily digestible. And she's actually a comic book and a comic art collector. Um, and so the content that she's been doing is both comic art and comic book related. Um, so, yeah, if you guys can go and check it out, um, it's pretty fun. You, you get a different perspective um, from Karen. And, um, yeah, please uh, consider subscribing to her channel. If you can And, and hit, hit likes on, on her. She only has three videos so far. Really, really new channel. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm sure she would appreciate the help uh, as much as you can if you can uh, do that. So please do that. And uh, in the not too distant future, Karen will also is lovely enough to have agreed to come on and share some time with us together. Um, uh, sometime next month, I believe it is that we've agreed upon. So um, I look forward to that. So thank you again, Karen. We're glad to see you. Thanks for dropping in. Um, David Barr, good day, mate, all the way from Oz. Good to see you, sir. And um, no, no tent piece interlocking commissions this week. Uh, <laughs> those are few and far between. You know, I don't know what too many. Sorry, Marcus. Are. Yeah, <laughs> like Mike, who can do that or who have done that? You know. Uh, hello, hello to everybody. What's up, Carl? Aloha, my friend. And uh, okay. salutations. Good In to see you, Kyle. Jeff, wedding all the way in Las Vegas. Good to see you again as well, sir. And of course, the, the the welcome from Dino, aka Time Lord. I don't know about that. Tell me about that, John. What does that mean? I'm not sure. I, I know <laughs> I wanted to meet uh, Dino. I'm not sure if he remembers um, in San Diego one time in a convention. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And he, Good. he was one of the ones that extended a welcome when I first joined CAF, too. So he's been very welcoming. Okay, excellent. Yes, well, he always is. Maki Pupu, I appreciate you coming in just to say hello. And uh, yes, if you can be back shortly. Yeah, that's fine. I appreciate it. Do what you got to do, my friend. And um, yes, you, 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 won't, you won't be able to, like I said, because once we start with the show and tell, we're going to kind of have to keep it rolling because, like I said, uh, John has given me two hours tops. So um, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 I guess you can bust, you guys can bust on me. I just won't have the time to be able to bust back on you. That's what, that's all what I'm trying to say, you know. Um, John, it looks like a, a friend of yours that I've never seen here before has popped in. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, would that be Leaf or Leif? Or Life? I, I want to say Leaf, but. Uh, yeah, because I remember in the 70s, everybody remember they used to say his name was Leif. They used to say Leif Garrett. Remember that singer? Yeah. Leif, Leif Garrett. But I don't know if his name was actually Leif or Leif or whatever. But uh, I know a guy. I know a guy with that name. And he actually pronounces it life as in L-I-F-E, you know, the opposite of death, life. So uh, my um, fellow friends I, I made over the years uh, through Instagram uh, when we started uh, comic collecting. So. Oh, okay. Do you still collect comics, John? Not too much. Most of it has been diverted to the OA funds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, a lot of people have done that, so that's not shocking, you know? I totally get that for sure. Andy, what's up, sir? Good to see you. Hey, Andy. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, come on, TJ. What do you mean? the What did I say that was a buzzkill already? Come on. That's not fair. What's up, Hart? Hey, good to see you, man. Hey, Hart. Uh... What's the time limit? Two hours. What can be more important than a bunch of internet guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, ask John. It's John who gave me the time limit. It's not like I want to do it that way, but I got to respect it. What, what, what do you want me to do, you know? I'm yeah, sure he's got things to do. <laughs> it's Mother's Day and uh, two daughters got to put to bed. So yeah, there you as go. a responsible husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. We, we all got stuff to do. We got families, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, what shirt yeah, is Ruben wearing tonight? Ruben? It's wanted for crimes against humanity. Sinister and it's six. a bunch of, <laughs> wow, Sinister Six. So oh, that's awesome. Very, very cool. That's a cool t-shirt. Um, CJ, room the chick magnet. Why'd you say that? Oh, because, because of Karen. <laughs> uh, you're crazy. Um, I, I, you know how hard I've been trying. You guys know, because that wasn't that show two weeks ago. That wasn't the first time I brought up the, the, you know, the topic of, hey, where, you know, where are the females? You know, like. They don't seem to want to hang out online and, and do this socializing. So 
I'm very, very happy that, uh, a very, thank you, by the way, David, for, for being welcoming to Karen. And you are so extremely welcome, Karen, very much so. And uh, hello, Karen, there you go, there we go. They love you guys, see, that's 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 what I like. Everybody be be welcoming, and that's how people will continue to come in and, and, and join in a little bit more regularly, you know? There you go, there you go, woman to woman, a nice welcome. And so no tomfoolery today, and we're toning down the machismo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mikhail, you might want to, you know me, like I'm, you know, anything goes on the show, but that's, you know, you, you I'll leave, I'll leave you be the sort of the deciding person on that, you know, however, uh, <laughs> whatever level you want to take it to or leave it down to, it's up to you. I'll leave it to you guys. Um, John, thanks to Jordan Poole. We have no Lakers game tonight. Oh Absolutely. gosh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Some nice, uh, nice warm welcomes to Karen, to Karen again. And she says, oh, hello to everybody. That's very nice. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for being so kind. And there's another one. Welcome to the party. So where does Nguyen live? I love the way you guys just think you, you're, you're already so comfortable with John that you can, uh, I'll, I'll refer to him by his last name, you know. <laughs> Southern California. There you go. He's a SoCal boy. Okay, so Dino, oh, Time Lord, because of the John gave him a limit. That's what he meant. Okay. Ah, <laughs> Thanks, Dino. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. Oh, look at Karen. Now she has to, we, we forced her to have to thank everybody else. <laughs> go, go Lakers, by the way. Final four. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. And uh, okay, rolling with the homies. Okay. I'm My show is a TARDIS, it's bigger on the <laughs> on the rewind. Yeah, everybody I have ever heard call him Leif. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, like I said, though, TJ, uh, a friend of mine is same name, but pronounce, it's pronounced Leif. So, yeah, I guess it can go both ways. So uh, Karen wants to let you know, John, that also, that's a cool shirt. Oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah. And, oh, is this another friend of yours? I've never seen Big Tato before. Who's Big Tato? Yes, Mike. He's a... Uh... He's a good friend. He actually owns a comic book store in Southern California, Comic oh, Tunes cool. and Toys in okay. uh, Tustin, if anybody ever is in the area. Shout so. out Tunes and Toys in SoCal. That's awesome. Hey, Dwayne Zepane. Good to see you, sir. I don't know what kind of a message uh, my first name is, but uh, I guess you're just saying Ruben. And so I can say Dwayne Zepane. And uh, yeah, why is everybody so curious? Check it out, uh, John. Even Carl, all the way in Hawaii, is asking, is it okay to ask where you live? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in, in between L.A. and Orange County. So it's an area called the South Bay. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are wild tonight. I don't know what, what, what's up with that. What's up with the nosy stuff, you know? <laughs> Geeks and drinks. Good to see you, man. And uh, what else? Okay, we got to get to this art because yeah, it's uh, 15 minutes already gone by. Oh, is there another one of your friends? Jimmy C. The, uh, John, the OA villain collector. Oh yeah, Jimmy was uh, one of the main reasons I got into OA. So, <laughs> hey, great. Yeah. awesome, awesome. And uh, Mr. Red Jack says Miss Vivian makes this a cool place for the women to hang out. It took, I don't know her presence in every show so far after eleven months. It it took a while for a, for a second uh, a woman to come in. So I don't know how much her presence helped, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad to see it starting to to to, to get rolling a bit. Uh, greetings, good to see you, Rich. What's up, buddy? And uh, yes, I know time's ticking away. Time's ticking away. There we go. James, another oh, friend. James. Yeah. There we go. What's up, James? And West, what's up, West? Another Ruben. <laughs> West. Look at Hoarder's Hide. Scott. Hi. Just <laughs> put a great comment. Hi. Not even capitalized. Hi. That's more like a yeah. Hi. Hey, Scott. Good, good to see you're so excited. Uh, Mike, you're still here. Been to comics, too. Oh, been to comics, tunes, and oh, toys Mike. many times while stationed at MCAS. Tustin? Is that what it's, is that what it's yeah, called? Tustin to study. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Southern Comic Geeks, what's up? What's up? And uh, who else we got before we start the show? Oh, that's next to Compton, he says, right? I know that's a joke. Oh, it's close to Compton, yeah. Is it really? <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Wow. It's on, uh, probably 15 minutes on the freeway. So it's, it's nearby. Jane knows Southern California. 
I don't know how a guy from Oklahoma would know much about Southern Cal, but uh, I'll take your word for it, though, you know. <laughs> Victoro, thanks you, of course, for the shout out. Um, so, yeah, guys, I said that I would not do what I just did and, and, and basically, you know, interact with all of you because of the time limit. But, oh, you know, I can't help it. And yes, for those of you watching on Rewind who only watch a few minutes here and there and you fast forward through it all, that's the reason you're wondering every time you go to my show every week and you're like, oh man, another three and a half hour episode. This is why. It's because I make everybody who shows up to watch live a part of the show. So it's all of us. It's about all of us together having fun together. And that's why the shows go so long. So there you go. That's the reason. Absolutely. And um, I did not know, James. Interesting. You're a military brat. Wow. And that side is from SoCal. Wow. I didn't know that. So cool. Dropping a little knowledge there uh, on your family. Wow. Very cool, man. Thanks for sharing. Like that. <laughs> Look at that. Tick. 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 Stop stalling. Okay, Marcus now wants us to get, to get to the art. Okay, everybody, yes. Absolutely. 17 minutes in. We'll get to the art. Um, as I told John backstage anyways, um, I want to get into it pretty quickly. Um, hopefully, we can flow through it at a pretty, pretty decent speed in hopes, and you know, we can't guarantee anything, but in hopes that we get through all the art and still, it would be cool if we still had 20, 30 minutes left at the end, and then we can talk to John and you guys can whip out uh, questions and, and, and comments and what, you know, we can just feel like we're relaxed a bit without having to make sure we get through all the art, you know? So, um, excellent. So, John, you ready to, to start with the uh, show and tell? Sure, absolutely. Okay, excellent. All right, everybody, let us get to the art. And um, for that, the first piece we have on the docket is this page, painted page by Paolo Rivera from Mythos, Fantastic Four, number one, page 19 from, geez, I can't believe, John, all the way back in 2007, doesn't it feel, if, if, I'm like, really that long ago? Like, wow, man. It's like yeah, 15, time flies. yeah, 16 years, but killer page, dude. Like all those, all those like memories from the FF history. What's up with that, man? Sure. No, I, I was happy to add this piece on, uh, you know, Paolo has always been one of my favorite painters. I think a little bit um, underrated or overlooked compared to other painters. Um, but I was fortunate to pick this up along with another painted piece a couple years back. Um, through his rep Marque on Splash Page. Um, oh yeah. You know, kind of just uh, the variety of Fantastic Four lore kind of captivated me, especially the the main villains in the background. You could see, you know, Doom, oh, yeah. Galactus, Puppet Master. Um, oh yeah, and then, the Watcher. I mean, everybody's there. Like uh, the Mole Man at the bottom. Yeah. And, and the good thing is, you know, a lot of these artists I interact with through social media. so. When I bought this and Paolo shipped it out, he he sent a message like I finally could uh take remove this out of my bathroom. So I, I found that was hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, man, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, can I ask, is this um does he does he do this type of stuff when it's painted? Um also on the, the standard eleven by seventeen size? Um it, it's not quite uh eleven by seventeen. Um uh let me see oh so you, are you, are you, when you say not quite you mean it might be a little smaller no actually a little bit bigger maybe a little bigger okay yeah let me see it's one of my pieces that i actually don't have quite framed yet but i'll pull oh, okay. it up. it's framed but not hung yet so oh, okay yeah maybe slightly just slightly bigger i mean the painted part is close to 11 by 17. So. Okay, got you, got you. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to know exactly. I'm just curious. That's all. Yeah, because you know, with with uh, painted pieces, um, you know, oftentimes there, you know, every now and then there's 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 artists who just like to work big, and you get a really oversized piece. You know. So, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just curious to see what the what working method he used when it when it came to painting. Um, yeah, very nice painted piece for sure. Absolutely. Um, frame with extra color per Ruben's suggestion. <laughs> oh, so John, John, I, I, I just, <laughs> I just want to say, um, let me come back to you. I just want to say that he's saying this because on more than one occasion on this show, um, I have brought, you know, the, the topic of, of 
framing and presentation has come up. And I'm just very adamant about the fact that black and white art, this is not black and white art, but black and white art should always be framed and, and, and presented, you know, with no color. No color if it's black and white art. Um, and, you know, some of these guys are always ragging on me. Well, they're ragging on me anyways, no matter what. But, uh, sure. yeah, they're ragging on me because, you know, they think, like, I may be a little too harsh about my my uh, my thoughts on the whole presentation thing when you're framing and hanging, whatever. But that's what, I, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what he's, he's, he's yammering about. But um, look at that. Yeah, hoarder's hug. I'm the boy <laughs> framer. No, I have taste. I have taste. I have classical taste. You can get colorful with paintings. It makes sense. But with black and white, it's tasteful. It's more... Listen, it looks more adult and less childish if you don't use color on black and white art. That's all I'm saying. But hey, everybody can do whatever they want with their art. Ultimately, as long as they're happy, that's uh, that's that's all that matters. I just bought a nice mat cutter. So worth it. Very easy. Wow. I would never do that because I just don't have the patience to do that, Knights of Old. Um, but cool if you if you're into it and you like doing it, yeah. I mean, you're not the only guy in the, guy in the hobby that that does it by, on their own. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, probably believes in mission. Oh God. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that one. Um, there's some women in the audience. Oh uh, boy, oh boy. Uh, no wonder the women don't show up, Scott. Uh, uh, oh gosh, Hart Ruben, the classy man. Yeah. Oh boy. Now I know for sure why women don't show up. Okay. Um, everyone, let's get to the second piece. Uh, why don't we? Let's uh, see what this is. And this one is another painted piece. And this one is a commission that John got not long ago of Hella and Fenris Wolf, who, who I first, I first, uh, I first got familiarized with Fenris Wolf from the uh, uh, Simonson Thor run back in the day in the 80s, 83, 84, when he he introduced them into there, but I, I don't know if he was already existing from previous Thor uh, or runs. I don't know. Do you know anything more about the, the Fenris Wolf than I do, John? Or No, not too much. Just okay. just that run as well. And then, of course, the the MCU movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. They did a good job, especially with Hela, the way they uh, portrayed oh, her. I loved, oh, I loved Hela. The, the, the outfit on Hela, the, the, head, the headpiece. Oh, the headpiece! Oh man, I, I was so happy with that. Oh wow, yeah, 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 beautiful. So tell me, tell tell us all a little bit about this piece. I, I gotta say, I, I am astounded at the 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 sheen, the 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 effect that he he managed to pull off on that glossy sheen of the of uh, Hella's costume, the the greens and the the purples. You know, oh, love it, love it. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I know recently in the past, you know, year or two, Felipe's been. Uh, getting more published work and more recognition. He's still one of those that uh, I find one of the best painters in the game right now. Um, so I was fortunate to be in contact with him and get several, you know, different villain commissions done in uh, 2020, 2021. And Hella was definitely one of those. Um, I just requested Hella and then he threw in the Fenris as extra. So I thought that was awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, it's uh, yeah. It's, uh, so, 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 so you you were the commissioner of the piece, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And and what's the um, what's the size of that one? Uh, this one, uh, by the way, John. This one's pretty big. Uh, I want to say probably like thirteen by nineteen. It, it's a little hard. It doesn't fit in the regular eleven by seventeen portfolio. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Got you. Got you. And no, Carlos, we're not. We're not. Like I said, at worst, we just won't have time to shoot the breeze afterwards. That's it. But we're going to get through all the art at least for sure. So, um, And like I said, he has to go. So we will definitely be, be, be keeping it to two hours. Um, yeah, no, this is, this, is, this is fabulous. And uh, thank you, Karen, for not being offended. I appreciate it. Um, and, and thank you for, for chiming in to let me know. That's, that's, that's so funny. Um, Though, there you go. See, James, though all my framing is white or black now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be, keep it, keep it, keep it adult looking. Keep it adult looking. Like I said, if it's a painting, then you can play with color. Uh, amazing hella. Yeah, it absolutely is. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, and it's an art. Mike says, a uh, great piece too. Hella's headdress always looks cool. Yeah, that's it's, just, it's such an incredible design, right? 
the, the headpiece is really what it just oh man it really adds to any any piece of art she's in i'll be honest that's kind of what i want to see when i see a page even though like published pages i'm hoping to see good shots of the headdress because it's just so beautiful you know it, intricate and beautiful and yeah so so beautifully designed and uh carl says holy moly and no idea who the artist is it's uh, well yeah it's felipe Massafera. Does a lot of commissions. Uh, he hasn't done as much. Uh, he's not known as much for uh, his published work because he hasn't done as much, uh, Scott. But uh, look him up. Look him up. You'll 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 start seeing. You'll get you'll get familiarized with his stuff pretty quickly if you just do a like a Google search. I uh, love the choice uh, color choices here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, Marcus can only uh, afford prelims. He wants us all to know he's a, he's he's a broke. He's a broke. Uh, he's a broke man. Only afford the prelims for Massafera because the prices just keep going up, right? And, I'm uh, curious of uh, Marcus's uh, the, the Phoenix cover he has. The I don't think he has it posted on Cap, but I remember uh, I think Felix showed it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And uh, John uh, Carl wants to know: Do you have a favorite artist or character? Um, I, I think definitely John Byrne and Jim Lee probably are my. Our top two, and then Magneto and Wolverine. Mm, okay, there you go. Thank you, sir. And Carlos is putting a little bit of like blanket on the on the fire uh, by saying that Felipe isn't known for delivering on some pieces, and he wants to congratulate you for the pickup. Um, I I have not heard that, but I'm also if that's true, then I'm very glad that John also got it. It took took some follow up communication, but yeah, I'm glad everything went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So perfect. So thank you, Nick. Hey, Nick, what's up, Nick? Oh, everybody, happy birthday to Nick! It's his birthday, fifty fourth birthday, Nikki. Happy birthday hey, to you. you. Uh, the teacher comes from away, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I can't do the whole song, Nick. We, we're we're short on time, and there's a lot more uh, a lot more comments commentary coming in uh, than I expected there to be. So uh, good morning, Mark. And Mark, by the way, just want to let you know, I'm uh, a little more than halfway through responding to your email. And so uh, that that response to your email is coming uh, shortly. Okay, very, very soon. Very, very soon, I promise. Um, what else do we got here? Yes, yes, everybody. Nick 54 and today is the day. There we go. We have to have a little piece of cake on all of us. And uh, look at that, even Karen. A new friend, Karen, even gets in on it and wishes Nick uh, a, a happy birthday. That's excellent. Thank you, Karen. That's so sweet. All right. The happy birthday, Nick. All right. I can skip all the happy birthday message because Nick can read them all by himself. And uh, yeah, they're all ex uh, excellent happy birthday images. So with that, everyone, let us move to the next piece in John's wonderful villains collection. I love this one. And this one is another commission. Done, completed over uh, between a five-year period. And um, here, take a look at this. It's a gorgeous Baron Zemo, um, penciled by Philip Tan, inked by Mark Morales. And then he even got Sebastian Chang to color it beautifully. So um, FYI, John, I just wanted to let you know, because I know you had, I know you had the, you had an image of the pencils as well. Um, but the, the, the pencil, the image of the pencils didn't make my cut because they were, it was, it was the, the photo was way too blurry and I didn't want to make the art look worse than it really is. So I thought I'll, I'll stick to the pencil and ink piece plus the colored piece. So, um, in case you're wondering why I left out your pencils. Sure. No, no worries. Um, so I wasn't the original commissioner. Um, oh. this, yeah, the, the oh. pencil had picked up after the fact that, um, I forgot on what platform, but, um, you know, shout out to Philip Tan. I, you know, he's probably one of the nicest Marvel artists in general. Um, I've interacted with him, you know, uh, at many conventions um, and keep in touch through social media, you know, stand up guy. Um, so I got the pencils and then I reached out to Mark Morales um, to uh, do the inks, you know, because he's done some pieces with Philip before. So I thought it would be a good match. And then I uh, reached out to Sebastian. Who did the color work um zemo always had like an interesting character design to me i love kind of the the boots with the fur the purple and gold so i thought the 
you know, the collaboration between all three turned out very well. And then, um, oh, you know, sure. Phil's uh, art rep, Kirk, reached out and he thought the piece turned out beautifully. So I think they're going to turn this into a convention print uh, to sell as well. So, yeah, fantastic. And Knights of Old is asking, I'm a little bit confused, Knights of Old, because you're asking, what materials are you? I, are you referring to this piece or when we were talking about framing or I don't know. Oh, cause okay. Here you're going paint. Uh, no, I mean, this, colors. Yeah. Yeah. Digital colors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pen and ink plus digitally colored. Yeah. And, um, let me see, bring on, yeah. Bring on the bad guys. Exactly. That's what I wrote in my description of the video down right below. Um, here we go. Nice. Okay. With the buddy, everybody saying hello. Zemo looks nasty. Cool. Yeah, he really does. It's fantastic. Uh, color turns Zemo to hero. <laughs> That's a good one. Zemo doesn't look like he has European taffy here. That, what, what do you mean by that? I don't know what that means. European taffy is part of his costume. Does people say that he looks like he has taffy on his costume or something? I don't, I don't get that one. <laughs> Maybe the color of the the purple sometimes can vary from uh, artist to artist. I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sure he'll let us know. I guess now that he sees, he knows that I've I've, I've asked the, the question. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, yes, everybody, please. Um, it doesn't take more than uh, half a second to just hit the thumbs up button, which is the what we call the like button. Um, please do so if you don't mind. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And um, Turkish delight. I mean, the line, the witch in the wardrobe has Turkish delight. I don't know what that has to do with this. Um, you guys are really putting some over my head here. Pen, ink, computer, no coffee stains. Okay, I'm not getting that one either. Um, was Zemo a Donny Osmond fan? You guys are killing me with the weird comments tonight, man. What, what are you guys all talking about? <laughs> Donny Osmond? I mean, I used to watch the Donny and Marie show, but I don't know what that means, Mark. Um, oh, what about the Hella paint? Oh, yeah, what kind of paint do you know what if it was acrylics on the Hella? I think it's uh, if I pronounce it right, gouache. Oh, gu gouache, 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 yeah, gouache, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, Marcus says Masafera probably uses gouache, yeah, there you go, there you go. And oh, and oh, okay, um, thank you. In the show, Falcon and Winter Soldier, he gave kids that, ah, right. uh, the, the, that's how he bought them with information, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I can always count on you to clear these crazy references up. Uh, Deep Purple reference. Carl, are you a fan? I spent uh, like two hours yesterday listening or watching on you here on YouTube, watching uh, people react to uh, Child in Time because it's uh, like my favorite uh, Deep Purple song. And I just love it. I can, I can just hear that over and over and over. Um, but I don't think anybody was making a Deep Purple reference. But very cool, though. Um, I'm glad you did, actually. And uh, yeah, so yeah, fantastic piece, John. Um, I must say that um, it's funny. It was one of my favorites, and I was like, oh, maybe you should save this kind of like for closer to the end, you know? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, because I like to you know save some of the, the the ones I love more to the end. And I was like, ah, whatever. I'll just put them in however I put them in, you know. But uh, you. yeah, beautiful piece. So so congratulations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, everybody, let us get to the fourth piece in John's wonderful collection. This is a cover um, of Thor's greatest nemesis and pain in his ass. Oh, Loki yeah. <laughs> By Stephanie ha uh, Hans. Is that how you say it? Stephanie Hans? Yes. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Journeyman to Mystery 645 cover with a really wild, wildly sort of uh, manipulated the uh, colors on the published version. Uh, I, I don't know what was up with that, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I prefer the left-hand side, which is the original art. So uh, yeah, let us know about this one a bit, will you, John? Yeah, so, you know, this is where, you know, Cap is great um, in terms of, you know, late nights kind of just searching through. I was looking for, you know, a good example of Loki and I always wanted kind of a traditional painted Stephanie Hans piece because um, she does between digital and, and some, traditional work, but it's been more uh, digital recently. So I reached out to a fellow calf collector that had this and, uh, you know, initially she wasn't trying to sell, but then she ended up reaching out to me when she was ready to let it go. Um, oh. So I did make this transaction through a uh, calf 
so happy to add this piece. And um, okay. I was a fan of the storyline too, with kind of Kid Loki or Aiko, and then um, Loki. It, it was a fun storyline overall. So I think it it was two birds with one stone uh, story arc that I kind of really liked, and then uh, you know a good Loki example and a Stephanie Hans piece. So. Okay, and. Uh... You don't have to answer, but uh, I'm going to ask you anyways. Uh, did the the collector that you got this from what did, what did the hat did that happen to be Reba by any chance? No. no. Okay. Okay. Because you mentioned she, and you know there's not that many she's who collecting published art that I can see. So um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to know more of them. You know. So yeah. But uh, no, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But you don't want to give her a shout out for being such a cool collector. Yes, I believe her name is Ashley. She has a lot of Isad Ribic's uh, artwork. Um, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, props to you, Ashley. Very, very nice of you to do that deal with uh, with John. That's very cool. Yeah, very, very, very lovely piece. And and sorry um, if you mentioned that. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. I didn't catch it. If you did, how long have you had the piece? Oh, it's been probably three or four years. I think. Now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Oh, and and because it's painted, I I I'm always curious. I have to ask again. Size on that one, ish. It's uh bigger than a little bit bigger than the um standard. standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It came yeah. framed and I kept it. I, I thought it was nice. Uh, it's yeah, also the presentation. <laughs> I can show you. Um, here you go. So, oh, oh yeah! Actually, you have a picture of this framed in the uh, in your gallery. Yeah, yeah so very I, nice. I like the way the color she chose, so I just kept it in there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Are you are you uh, are you um, uh, how do you say um, struggling to find room, or is it just time that you haven't had in order to find the you know the, the, the hang the pieces that are not hanging yet? I think a combination of both. Um, a little paranoid in Southern California with the earthquakes too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's true. I always forget about that. I, it's not something because I don't deal with that. So obviously, it's it's something that I didn't think about, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've had a few, um, like four or five point ohs that is enough to knock some things off the wall. But oh, really? So far, like damaging. So I've been a little hesitant with that, and then also finding appropriate room and temperature. So. Okay. Andy uh, says that Gillen's uh, Journey to Mystery is one of his favorite runs. So that's that's pretty high praise. Wow. Very cool. Thanks for letting us know, Andy. And um, let me see. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. I will say, because you guys know I'm honest, I'll say my opinion, whether you like it or not, that the frame itself is very busy and that's not just an opinion that's you know that's the truth it's a very busy frame however it's a perfect design for the subject matter so it works it works excellently you know so yeah i like it yeah i like it i also wouldn't have uh, if i was in john's shoes i would not have taken it out either might as well use it you know because that's a nice one yeah so very very cool yeah rick tells you uh velcro them to the wall <laughs> <laughs> and 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 Mr. Red Jack saying, and then get shatterproof glass. Does that even exist? I guess the only thing you can do is get uh, acrylic, an acrylic glaze. But acrylic, it's not, it's not as clear. And it's the worst part about acrylic is that it scratches so easily, so so easily. Like I'm talking about, you don't need to just touch it. It's like if you take a duster and you try to lightly dust the glass, right, the acrylic. It gets scratched. You get you see all these little scratches appear, and it's like, ah, it's just frustrating. So yeah. Hey, listen, you live in in California. I mean, that's that's Southern California, whatever. You got the deal, uh, or even nor even NorCal, right? You you have danger of earthquakes all over California. So sure, it's something, something you guys got to live with. But uh, interesting that you said that, John. I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware that like four and five on the Richter scale actually loosens stuff enough that they can fall off walls when they're hanging I, I i just thought things shook but not enough to like have things fall off walls yeah the last one last year i was in my daughter's um playroom and like two of the things kind of actually got dislodged and fell off so i said 
Wow. Probably not going to hang too much after okay. that. <laughs> well, in that case, I don't know. You 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 may have to consider getting it, getting them all out of frames and just putting them in portfolios. At least you'll flip through them and look at them. I don't know. I don't know. You'll you'll do what you what yeah whatever you think is right. You know. Sure. Yeah. It just it just seems weird because you know when you have something framed and ready to go, so you can really enjoy it on the wall. It seems weird to have to keep them in frames, but like have them leaning against the wall on the floor, you know? Yeah. I <laughs> but you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, obviously, you know? So, um, all right, everyone, let us get to the next piece in this Bring on the Bad Guys collection. And for that one, uh, this is piece number five on this. We are going to hit Thanos from Infinity, the first issue, page 45 by... Uh, a very, very popular artist, Jim Chung. Jim, don't call me Jimmy Chung. Um, from 2013, already 10 years ago. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love all the, the fine line inking all over his face. Oh, my gosh. I love, love, love that, John. Yeah, I, this is definitely uh, one of my favorite pieces. I, I think Jim just did an excellent job with kind of that portrait portrayal of, of Thanos, the, the deep blacks and... Uh, kind of the starry background. Um, I, I also picked this up through CAF. Uh, I wasn't the original buyer um, for this, but yeah. I really enjoyed the story arc. I think it was like a six piece arc that had like two parallel storylines going together where like um, it was the Avengers teaming up with Super Scroll and Ronin fighting like this other intergalactic species. But on earth there was the Black Order and Thanos also threatening the Avengers and you know, this story arc kind of stuck with me. And then when I saw this piece, I said, this is kind of, you know, a perfect modern Thanos piece for me. Um, so, yeah, picked it up. And, yeah, Jim Chung's phenomenal. I ran into him at the last uh, WonderCon and talked to him, too. A, a, a great guy and a very nice, always takes time. I wanted to shout him out because he did um, take time to do uh, sketches for my daughters. He did Scarlet oh, Witch yeah. and uh, Rogue for my daughters. Uh Free of charge, you know. Um, oh yeah, at a, at a at a convention. Yeah, I, I visited him in Artist Alley, and uh, you know, my daughters are six and eight, so I started okay. them some sketchbooks. So then, yeah, yeah. Saw that, and then he just, you know, I was waiting to pay, and he said, "No, it, it's on him." So. Okay. Awesome. That's very, 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 very lovely uh, man, uh, uh, Jim Chong. So, yeah, that's great to hear. Um, yeah, Dwayne Zepain says, yeah, very nice shading. Yeah, I love those, uh, the shadows. And like I said, even all that fine line work on his face. And uh, Karen says, great Thanos, love the inks on it. Yeah, they're just, yeah, it's super beautiful, beautiful stuff. I mean, it's no surprise why he's one of the, the more popular artists in the, in, the, in the industry, you know? So, um, yeah, it's gorgeous stuff. Yes, yes, Mark. He absolutely is <laughs> a, a great dentist. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, exactly, Marcus. Marcus makes a great point. I want to point that out, too, because if, you know, when I, when I saw the, the published piece, just looking at the published piece, I, if I was imagining, okay, what does the original art look like? I would have immediately expected that everything above the mountain range would have been just blank. So I would have figured that would have been all white and empty, you know, because it looks like it was just, you know, an outer space uh, background dropped in by the colorist. Um, which which is well how they often do it, right? The 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 penciler just says, you know, they leave a little note saying, yeah, drop in some kind of outer space background. But uh, it's so cool that you know that 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 stuff is actually there on the original. So fantastic, just a great a great background, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, very very cool, beautiful stuff. Thank you. And, um, yeah, with that, we are going to be switching gears a little bit, folks. We're going to be switching um, to D.C. now, uh, only because, uh, of course, John is primarily a Marvel guy, but it's really cool that we have at least uh, a few D.C. pieces, and uh, that's what we, we start checking out right now. So, everybody, hold on to your hats. Uh, this next piece is a, a killer cover by a very popular, for many years now, popular cover artist Mark Brooks. The cover to Detective Comics, number 995 from 2019, just a few short years ago. And I mean, come on, dude. Like, like the, 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 a large part of the rogues gallery and Batman is still there. And even though 
you don't see a lot of Batman. The the angle at which this is is done from is spectacular. I love 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 that uh, um, you know camera up on high and 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 really vertical looking down shot towards Batman with all the other you know rogues up up at the top and around them. Like uh, it's phenomenal. It's just fantastic, man. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Congrats, by the way. No, oh, thank you. Um, so definitely a big Batman fan. I, I do tend to lean more towards Marvel, but you know, Batman and X-Men are kind of my two main uh, things uh, since childhood. Uh, has a lot of nostalgia to me. Um, so, you know, just love the composition on this piece. Kind of like you said, even though it's not a clear shot of Batman, just the, the shadow, him going through Arkham Asylum gates and then captures most of my favorite bat rogues i i wish two-face was there too but <laughs> too i uh yeah I, <laughs> it did it didn't escape my notice either that you know some of the other great ones were missing but i wasn't gonna you know i'm not gonna be you know b bitch about that when you know it's just so fantastic either way you know so um yeah beggars can't be choosers at this point where you, you gotta yeah you got a killer piece there regardless you know and this one, you know, it's um, kind of like the early bird gets the worm. I saw Mark post some process shots on uh, social media, reached out, and his wife, Lisa, was kind enough to, to work with me. Um, so then I got to pick this up in person at San Diego, I want to say in 2019, Comic-Con. So I was able to meet Mark and Lisa, take some pictures with them, and chat about the piece. So, so, oh, that yeah. makes it a lot more fun, too. Yeah, and you get that memory to go with the cover. That's awesome. Yeah, that always that always adds to the fun of owning pieces when you've had a certain, um, a certain you know, connection, a rapport uh, uh, of a meeting that you had with the artists, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the original art is colored better than the actual published um, cover. Yeah, and I got to say, um, Dwayne Zepane, I can only imagine how nice it looks in person because this, in all honesty, it's not the greatest. It's it's not a scan. It's a photo, um, and and because it's a photo, it has a, as you can see the white parts. It, it has more of a a yellow tinted tint to it uh, because it's a photograph. And I tried to read. This is even me having reduced the the uh, saturation to try to reduce the the yellow uh, the yellowish tint. Uh, it's the best I could do, though, without taking away the blue color as well. Um, but, yeah, I can, I can imagine what it must look like um, uh, in, in person. It's got to be really fantastic. So, um, Yeah, this one is oversized. It's like 23 by 15, so, so it's pretty big. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, even better. It's more impressive when you have it in person, you know? Yeah, that's fantastic. And, um, and yeah, that's a good question, Nick. How is it that we have like 30 viewers and only 23 likes? Come on. Seven of you just need to click that thumbs up. It's not hard. You don't get spammed by doing it. Nothing's going to happen to you. I don't get any money out of it either. It just helps the algorithm uh, on YouTube, you know, say, oh, look, there was quite a bit more likes than usual. Okay, maybe we'll put this video in front of a few extra people. That's all it does. It just helps grow the, 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 the community, you know, the hobby. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Um, Mar uh, so Mike says, uh, from the art that he's seen, Mark works big. So that is pretty big. And, yeah, I, I would think that he just likes to work bigger than standard size, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you never know, Marcus. I mean, it's all – that's the thing. When you're, when you're photographing instead of scanning, right, like lighting is everything, right? Lighting is everything. So, so that's the thing. That's what makes it tough. Uh, especially for painted pieces, you know? Um, yeah, the indoor home lighting is warm and yellow. Yeah. Uh, number one Marvel fan says, no one wants to share you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're lucky I gotta, you're, you're, you're lucky I gotta keep, keep the show going. Uh, okay, let us check uh, the next piece in the collection. And uh, we are gonna stick with DC, because there's not much anyways. We're going to stick uh, with DC until we're through with it and uh, then move on back to the Marvel stuff. So for this one, one of my favorite, visually, visually, I haven't read a lot of, of, of comics with this guy, but visually, I love this villain because you would think it, it, should, it should be stupid, 
Yet somehow it works. In comics, it just seems to work. When you visualize this guy being in, 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 in re, you know, existing in, in, in real life, you would think how idiotic that costume, especially the helmet in particular, but it works. So check this out, everybody. Aquaman number 50 cover by Ryan Sook uh, from 2019. And um, as you can see, it's got that uh, nice little touch of the uh, reflection of Aquaman and Mera in uh, each of his uh, eyelids. Um, which you don't really notice as much because of all that crazy orange uh, on the published art, but you can see them nicely on the original. So, yeah, so this this is a beautiful one. Um, what do you what do you what do you got to tell us about this one, John? Yeah, um, you know, Black Manta, similarly to like Deathstroke, um, I always loved their costume design, and I always was looking for like a good Black Manta piece. You know, I still watch the a lot of the DC animated movies, so he's been featured in a lot of those. Um, but I have to thank you, Mikhail, for this piece. Uh, it was before I, I kind of knew him and chatted more with him. Um, I reached out to him on, on CAF, and I remember at first, you know, he really liked the piece and didn't want to let it go. But then he actually messaged me back and said, you know, I, I looked at your gallery, and I think it would really fit well with the villain theme. So he actually did let it go. And the way he packaged the art, you know, his, his reputation is well-deserved. He uh, printed out like a Black Manta piece and posted it on the outside and the package is, was probably the best I've ever had as well. So oh yeah. Oh out. yeah. We, Mikhail, Mikhail, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he doesn't skimp on the packaging. Yeah. So he's, he's good <laughs> with that. So we, we, we all appreciate that when we get stuff from, from Mikhail for sure. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a fabulous piece. Uh, when did you pick this up from him anyways? Yeah, it was probably 2019, 2020. So. Oh, okay. Okay, so it was a pretty modern, uh, pretty, pretty, fairly recent cover when you picked it up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Karen says great cover. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely is. Yeah. CJ says waterlicious. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So um, love to see this, especially um, as I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy just that you we, we got a little bit of DC stuff mixed in too, since there's not much, but at least we got some and. Yeah, some pretty cool stuff too. So, um, yeah, very, very happy to see that. Okay, everybody, check this one out. This is the next piece. Um, it's really, really fun. It, I would say probably the most fun piece, perhaps in his whole collection. I'm not saying the most beautiful piece. I'm not saying the, the most in demand piece. Remember, the most F U N fun piece. I'm I, curious now. <laughs> I, see, that's why I'm building it up, John. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I wanted to see if you could figure out what I'm talking about, and you'll let me know in a second. But to me, this is fun because I kind of wish, like, I should do this also. But check this one, everybody. Check this out. It's a commission of the Red Hood, unmasked, and he reveals himself to be, guess who? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's awesome. This is what makes the community great. Um, you know, Tyler Kirkham, uh, my first ever like published original art by was a Red Hood piece by him. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Red Hood as well. And this was actually like a, a random act of kindness. One of my other OA collectors, uh, Raghav, actually collaborated with Tyler and um, they did this commission and it was gifted to me as a birthday gift. So this is, I think, after. Uh, Batman 638 cover, I think, when Jason kind of revealed his identity. So it was a kind of a play on that. And, um, you know, Tyler is a good friend and he's probably my favorite Red Hood artist as well. So, yeah, yeah definitely a fun So piece. cool. So cool, man. And um, um, I'm not really sure because um, the screen, I believe, on my software, it, it's, it's a different size than what everybody else sees on YouTube. So just in case any of you, or you know, who knows, maybe some a bunch of you maybe uh, looking uh, through your phones instead of on a on a PC. I keep forgetting because I'm a PC guy. So um, in case those of you can't read, um, so after Tyler uh, drew the piece, he posted this. Um, I believe that's inst is that that's Instagram? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he posted it on Instagram, and he the message he said is I drew friend and art collector John Wynn for his birthday. Ha <laughs> ha! Can you tell he's a Red Hood fan? <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Big surprise when uh, Raghav and Tyler let me know. So thank you much to the both of them. Yeah, that's that's yeah, 
Uh, thanks. Yeah, I, I thank them too for such a really cool thing. And yeah, it's so so cool, man. Um, and you would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids. Yeah, bricks, lots of bricks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so uh, this is beautiful. It's um, um, and and where was it? Oh yeah, James. I didn't lie. I'm just saying. I don't. I, I said it the way I said it. I choose my words carefully because I don't want. I don't want anybody accusing me later of saying. Oh, come on. You know, that that's not going to be his most desirable piece. It's only desirable to him because it's personal. That's why I said that. That's why I said that. To me, like I said, I, I love it. I think it's just, it's so, so cool. And that's why for me, like it, something like this, it would be, you know, if I had it, it'd be like probably be my, my the favorite piece in in, uh, uh, in my collection. You know what I mean? Like it just, it would, it, because of the meaning that it has, you know? Absolutely. So, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would have been drawn as Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd all love to see that, Marcus. So uh, get to it. Start commissioning now. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. Um, from there, everybody, we are going to the last final DC piece. And um, this is a published piece. Let's check this one out. Um, very nice for those of you who are into Batman from the modern era. Um, it's got the, it's from Suicide Squad Annual Number One. It's uh, page forty. The splash, the the title and credit splash. And on this one, John, as you can see, I had to do pencils, inks, and yeah. polish. And so, yeah, I, I just thought it looked uh, really wicked cool this way. And uh, yeah, Eduardo Pansica and uh, Julio Fajera. So. Uh, only from a couple of years ago. Uh, what do you got to say about this one? Yeah, so you know, you know, Batman and the Court of Owls definitely. Uh, how do you say it? It kind of reinvigorated my my love for comics. I, I think yeah. I want to say 2012, 2013, around the New yeah. Fifty Two. Um, this and Uncanny X Force. Um, those were the two story arcs that really got me back into like going to the comic shop weekly, picking up comics, and you know, Talon. Um, this is the original talent william cobb um he's always been a favorite design of mine by capullo and snyder as well so um i was happy to pick up a cool splash of him i, I want to say this was very uh difficult to track down both pieces i got the pencils but the yeah. inks took a lot of kind of locate and then finally pick it up so i was happy to add both pieces to, to okay and, 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 and how much uh how much time did it take in between before you got the uh, you, you tracked down the the inks? You know, I, I knew who the inker was, but I was trying to find the best way to communicate with them. Um, and you know, they never responded for a long time. And then finally, I think um, I got a reply once. I, I want to say it took you know six seven months probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not bad. I mean, come on. There's plenty of collectors out there that are probably waiting years than the you know that have been wanting to get. Either they have the pencils or they have the inks and they want the other part. And they're sure. probably like, where is it? Where is it? You know, I haven't seen it. It's been years, you know. So all things considered, a few months. Oh, gosh, that's 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 that, that <laughs> might as well have been a day for some people, you know. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's fantastic. And it's a, it's really beautiful. And uh, um, it's a great piece for you in your case, because, as you said, that storyline with the Court of Owls, if it reinvigorated your love for reading comics again, um, after I'm assuming you taking a break because you had kind of been out of it or whatever yeah, for a while. About a decade. I, I used to yeah. read in you know, the late 80s to the mid to late 90s. And then okay. once uh, college and grad school started after that, it took like a decade hiatus, I want to say. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. And that's 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 what I'm saying, right? Um, you, 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 you read that, it reinvigorated your love for reading comics again, and then getting something like this. And, and by the way, let me just commend you on, on being someone who is willing to, to, you know, like a lot of people that get so infatuated with, oh, well, this storyline that reinvigorated my love for comics, I got to get a piece from that storyline. And that's okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. That's perfectly understandable. And, and it's very cool. But what I love about what you did is you were perfectly okay getting something that's literally only a couple of years old, a decade, you know, like from almost a decade after the, the actual storyline that reinvigorated your love for comics. And, 
you know, you it didn't. In other words, it didn't need to be a piece from that storyline. It just it was a piece that had the character from that storyline, which it's it's good enough, right? It, it just it reminds you, it brings back the memories of that story that you read. Sure. Yeah. No, it's about tenfold cheaper, and it's still kind yeah. of satisfying that craving. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The tenfold cheaper thing is always very important too, you know? <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. Hart says, yeah, great one. And yeah, I see, like I said, even Mike, Mike says, seven months, that's practically overnight. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, don't look, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, as they say. That's that is like the uh, one day to a lot of people. So yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you finally did track it down though. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice piece. Um, show at the halfway mark. Yes. Uh, well, almost we're going to get to, I believe it's one more piece, Rick. Once we get through that next piece, uh, yeah, this next piece, and then we're at the halfway mark. So yeah, we're making good time. Um, at this pace, uh, we'll hopefully have 15 minutes or so to chat at the end. So, um, all right. So the 10th piece is back to Marvel. Check this out, everyone. So this is by Lee Garbett. It uh, is a piece done for Royal Mail uh, England, uh, the stamps um, for the for the uh, yeah the, the 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 postal service in the UK. And here's just so you see how they determine what is going to make it onto the stamps and what won't. You can see how they basically line out the shape of the stamp, and uh, yeah, that's how you see what will get cut off and what won't. And uh, yeah, really really neat. And we'll do my requisite strobe light effect like we're all at the club that <laughs> unfortunately i can't do it faster than this it just doesn't work but uh yeah really cool man what uh what do you got to tell us about this one yeah I, definitely a unique piece you know um this year they're celebrating 60 years of x-men so uh the uk had uh, made a special set of stamps to commemorate the 60 year it's funny because i i stumbled across you know just the a picture of the hero piece i was like ah bummer i wish there was like a a villain uh set and then uh, when i scrolled down i found that there was actually a villain set um and i saw it was done by lee garbett so you know i, I purchased from Quan chang before so i i reached out to him and then uh he connected me with lee and then it was available so I was fortunate to pick this up with magneto kind of being my favorite villain and then definitely juggernaut is up there as well so i thought it was a Overall cool piece, um, uh, Lee sent it. He also sent like a um, copy of the stamps as well. And this is actually, um, pencils and inks were done both by Lee, but they're on separate boards, so. Okay, because I, I was gonna say, isn't, I was gonna say, what, what, what wasn't this a, a pretty gigantic piece? It's actually in two separate boards. So the first board is like jugs to about Magneto, and then yeah. the second piece is uh, Emma and, and Sabretooth. Yeah. Right, right, but but even if we take into account both pieces, are the individual pieces are they not large? They're long, but the the height is uh, actually height shorter is. than the standard. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, no, wicked, wicked, man, it's uh, very nice. And uh, JC says Lee Garbett is great, and yeah, we know you made a mistake. You don't have to correct yourself, but JC. And by the way, JC, uh, good to see you again. I hope, I hope. Uh, I hope you're not here because you felt guilty after I uh, said hello to you on Nikki B show on Friday, saying it's been a while since I had last seen you. But uh, always, always good to see you, dude. Um, thanks for dropping in as always. And uh, oh, look at that, Comic Art Boston. Hey, hey, saying hello to me and to you, John. Uh, afraid you can't attend the show tonight live, but just checking in and we'll catch the show on Rewind. I appreciate that. No worries, Comic Art Boston. Right, Thank you. Hope, hope, I hope you're well. And um, yeah, this is definitely a winner. Oh, and Comic Art Boston came back in to give you a message. John, just to say that you have an awesome collection. Some villains are sometimes heroes as well. Thank you, and absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Mark wants to know, do the stamps have the new profile of King Chuck? No, I do not think that King Charles <laughs> yeah. is going to be making it uh, onto these. Uh, <laughs> but if they did, then I wouldn't buy them, you know? I don't know. King, King King Chuck and the superheroes and supervillains don't really mix. But uh, yeah, great piece, man. Great piece. And um, yeah, no, you're no, my pleasure. You're welcome. Um, just to show everybody again one last time. 
that that's what it looks like. Um, when I have postcards as well. So I, when I went to the website, they have postcards of these now. So I thought, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Very, very neat. Okay. Very, very cool. Okay. Um, everybody, before we get to the next piece, I just want to quickly give a shout out to Nikki B, not only because it is his 54th birthday today, um, but for everybody who doesn't know already, you should all know by now, uh, Nikki B does a, a really fun uh, sales slash chat um, show every Friday night. Check it out. There's the uh, lovely young birthday boy himself. Fridays, every Friday is at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock uh, Pacific. And um, for those of you who weren't there this past Friday, two days ago, you would have seen, it would have kicked ass show. So Nick broke up the uh, Spider-Man number eight book, was it? Or was it seven? I always get confused. Seven, eight? Either way, it's the one with Mark Bagley and a, a billion different Spider-Man characters. And I just want to um, let you all know that uh, during the show, I believe there was one piece left. So unbelievable sales during that show. Uh, so congratulations, Nick. And he has since sold the last page that didn't sell on the show. So for those of you who are wondering what was going to happen to, to, to that book on that show on Friday, if you didn't tune in to watch, not only was it a massive success live on air, it, it, it ultimately sold out completely with one piece to go after the show. So uh, congratulations, Nick. Good, good on you, man. That, 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 that's a... Really, really, really amazing. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that was all Mark Bagley with uh, Dell and Hennessy on ink. So uh, beautiful stuff. Oh, and by the way, Nick, just wanted to let you know, I looked on your channel because, um, you know, I, I I always do this for everybody who, who, who wants to know where to find Nick's channel and his show. The show can be found on YouTube.com right here on YouTube. Um, just look up the EXP because it's called the Original Art Experience. Um so the, the URL is uh, youtube.com slash. Just remember the EXP. Um, so easy to find. But uh, Nikki, I just wanted you to know, I was looking for the link because I wanted to pop in the direct link to next week's, next Friday's uh, show. But like, I don't know how you guys do your, your you know, scheduling of the shows. I didn't see it. I couldn't find it. So I don't know if you scheduled it or not. But if it's scheduled already today, I, I, I couldn't find it. So... Sorry, dude, but uh, uh, no direct link. But anyways, everybody, it's easy to remember. YouTube.com slash the EXP. So there you go. Um, and I'm noticing that there's like a bazillion comments that have flown in um, since I gave Nikki the little promo. Uh, let me see. And I don't know, Ruben, I check in lots on post shows and live when I can. I know you do. I know you do, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um and uh, yeah, I'm not like that. digressing. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think a lot of us will agree with that, you know. But uh, no, let's see what else we got. Uh, okay, so yes, to make it clear, he broke up number seven, Spider Man number seven. There we go. Thank you, Comic Art Boston. You said you had to leave Comic Art Boston. You're so addicted. You can't. You, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you see, some guys, they just they say they got to pop in and leave, and then they don't leave. They just can't help it. Um, Oh, he's ex ex EXP. Yeah, nice. Expect the unexpected. Yes, very much so. So now complete sellout. Exactly. Very, very awesome. And let's see. But I heard on Facebook sales aren't that sales aren't real. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but somebody must have started some thread and, and said that, oh, somebody was bitching about Nikki's sales being fake. Oh, you're going to have to email me about that and let me know what, 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 what that was all about. I didn't notice that. I, that must have been in the art group, right? Yeah, that's okay. Whatever. You know, there's always people that are going to be just negative, negative, negative. You know, whatever. Like they, they just, they're just. That's just the kind of lives they have. Whatever. So, um, oh dear, but it exists, Marcus. Great show. Nick shows are always a blast. They certainly are. Um, hey, John. There's a lot. He, he's still here. There's lots of villain <laughs> art on the show as well. Ragav V. Ah, great collection, John. Oh yes. He's the, the Red Hood uh, commissioner with Tyler. So, yeah. There you go. There you go. Thanks for popping in, dude. Um, I keep getting XP Realty selling homes. What? Uh, I'm sure you can find it. I mean, you don't have a problem finding it. Uh, Ruben has such a hold on me. 
I don't know what it is. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm hypnotizing you somehow or something, you know. Cab, yes, Cab can't quit me. Exactly. So funny. Uh, got a few moments, so hanging around a bit. Okay, I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. We all love having you here all the time, Cab. We appreciate it, so thank you. And uh, you're very welcome, Nick. Very welcome. Uh, the same Facebook that told me to take horse medicines, <laughs> so I trust it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that thing called again? That horse medicine. Ivermectin. That's it. That's it. Oh, so I trust it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Scott, <laughs> stop watching EXP. Felt like I was watching Home Shopping Network. Oh, come on, Scott. Come on. You can fight it out with Nick then. Uh, 27 likes. Damn, still only 27 likes? Come on. There's like five of you. There's five of, five more of you here that, that still haven't hit the like button there. Please hit that thumbs up. Thank you. And thank you for, for doing that, Nick. Appreciate it. Uh, that's one more come in. Two more. Let's get to 30. All right. So, everybody, let's get back to the art. Um, yes. Let's get back to the art because we're only halfway through. We got to get to the rest of it. And there's like 49 minutes to go. All right. So, one of my favorite pieces, again, from John's collection. Um, oh, I just love this. I love this. Um, it's funny because when I was doing the – I was making the slide for this. In my head, I was running through the things I would say about this, which I don't normally do that, but I was so caught up in it. I just it started playing in my head, you know, because I just, ah, I love it. So anyways, let's just show it to everybody. And, but of course, it's your art. Let me, let, let, I'll let you tell us all what, what, what your feelings are on this piece. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so uh, definitely a recent commission. Um, many of you that know me, I'm a big fan of Ariel Olivetti. Um, definitely. I feel kind of an underrated artist as well. Um, and I, I love his oil and acrylic work. Um, I think that's where he truly shines. Um, so Magneto being my favorite character, I, I asked him to kind of just do a piece highlighting uh, Magneto as a child in uh, the concentration camps. That's what the idea I gave him. And then he kind of ran with it. So uh, this piece is done both with oil and acrylic. Um, you know, he said Frazetta played a big uh, inspiration to him as well. So, yeah, I mean, definitely, I, I just, you know, kind of the fine details he does, just the different shading of the purple trim and Magneto's helmet, kind of the, the crack on the side, uh, yeah. it's intricate details. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, um, for me... Okay, look, my my artistically, I love the top half. Okay, I just love the way he did Magneto, the helmet. Um, that's all great, but I like 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 Comic Art Boston just said, who who uh, once again said he he really had to leave for for real now, and then and then made this comment right that it's not only beautiful but but truly poignant as well, and that's exactly my feelings. Um, I love that that he. You know, he put in, um, you know, the whole thing about the, the 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 Holocaust. I mean, that's what makes it, to me, a, a much more powerful piece. Sure. And in particular, although I will say a little bit disturbing, but the way that the blood spatter comes off of the lower rung of the barbed wire, um, it's scary, but at the same time, yeah, it, it's just like 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 Cap says. It's just poignant at the same time, and this is what really makes it to me. Now that we know, you know, Magneto's background, um, yeah, I love it. I love that's that's it makes it for me, you know. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. The whole thing all together as a as a piece in general, just absolutely fantastic. And and Karen says amazing too. Yeah, hey Karen, I'm I'm so happy you're still here, Karen. Um, but uh, yeah, I just uh, absolutely phenomenal, dude. Um, and let me just ask you, John, because um, and, and again, I'm sorry, I was I was trying to look for comments, so I'm not sure if I, I may have missed it. If you said it, sure. um, you so first of all, you got this commissioned yourself, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Was it was it you who requested what would be on it, or 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 was it um, Ariel that that decided? I kind of gave him the ideas. I just wanted like a. Um... A, a childhood Magneto, as well as kind of the World War II concentration camp theme. Then okay. Ariel kind of ran with that. So okay, okay. Oh, that's that's brilliant. Good, good, good on you, man. That's a good idea. Like, yeah, that's that's. Um, I think it's, I think one it's, of those you know characters that walks that fine line between hero and villain. And 
I felt like his childhood kind of shaped, you know, what he became. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ariel just did a great job kind of captivating that hopeless luck as a child, uh, which led him down that path. So, yeah, absolutely. And and CJ, like CJ says, right, thought provoking, powerful art. And and I gotta show Mark's comment because he 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 nails it, right? So the villain in this piece isn't on the page. It's the people on the other side of the barbed wire. Absolutely, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. It's so well said, Mark. Like, just, yeah, the best. You win for comment of the evening. Absolutely. That is, that's the truth is right there, you know? Um, yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Carl, you got to go to the girlfriend's house for their uh, Mother's Day dinner. I appreciate it. Thanks, Carl. Um, yeah, thank you uh, for, uh, yeah, for dropping by for as long as you could. Uh, and happy Mother's Day to you um, and, and, and to you, to your mom, your girlfriend's mom, to everybody else's mom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good week, and I'll catch you hopefully here next week, buddy. All right. So, yeah, fantastic piece. Um, yeah, I, 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 I was even thinking of keeping that one for the end because I thought that was <laughs> so powerful. Well, you know why I didn't, though, in the end? Because it's so powerful, but at the same time, because it's such a – the subject matter is so – strong if you will i was like maybe not maybe better to not end on yeah a, that note. <laughs> down note, you know yeah exactly so i thought yeah let's let's get it out of the way you know so very very cool all right everyone let us hit the next piece in john's awesome villain collection and um check this one out we're sticking with the same theme x-men and magneto from the official marvel index to the x-men number one Page one by Ramita Jr. and Klaus Johnson from 1987. Wicked, wicked piece, dude. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, uh, I was um, highly looking after like a, a good Ramita Jr. piece. The first comic book I ever bought off the rack was the early 200 issue where, um, you know, you have the whole X-Men and Wolverine's like, come on, bub, mess with us, make our day. I think that was the yeah. Ramita. Um, so, you know, being Magneto, being my favorite character, I just thought this was a well-done piece against the original five X-Men, kind of just like all the heroes using their powers as well. So um, yeah. I'm happy. You know, I think Romita and and Claus um, together was was definitely a a good pair. So happy to add this piece. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And and what I what I really love about it actually is it's kind of cool. Not just the art itself, but I think it's kind of a cool feature about it that, you know, John, you know, he, he, he sort of made his bones doing a nice run on, well, two runs really, but he first made his bones on his first run of uh, Uncanny X-Men, you know, throughout the 80s. Um, but of course, that's the new X-Men. So it's, it's kind of cool that the guy that really got pretty famous by doing that run on X-Men, um, you get this piece. You know, with with his his, I don't know. Might might this be his one and only piece where he does the 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 Stanley Jack Kirby version of the team? You know, a so, great point. Yeah, yeah. I haven't come across another another one. Well, maybe um, I know like uh, in the three hundred issue, there were some montages that he did that might have had a few of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. But but we we definitely know even if he did, they're few and far between. Regardless, sure. you know. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, number one Marvel fan, uh, awesome, from two of the greats, exactly. And pretty cool for people who weren't around back in the 80s to see, you know, who are, people who are more familiar with um, uh, Ramita Jr. and Klaus inking Ramita Jr., um, they probably, a lot of people, probably younger guys probably think, oh, you know, these guys have been working since, like, the 2000s, probably, like, 20 years now together, you know? And they don't realize, man, they, they first worked together like way longer ago than that, you know, going back to at least 87. Yeah, so really, really cool piece here. So, yeah, very, very happy that you included that one. And we got to show two Magneto pieces in a row, which is always good because he's a killer villain. So <laughs> I like that too. All right, everyone. And from there, let us go to the next piece, piece number 13. And not only two cool, well, one hero slash villain plus a villain um but the first page of the first issue of the series 1975 super villain team up 
Awesome. Number one, page one, George Tosca and the 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 legendary Bill Everett on inks. So cool. So cool, dude. Wow. Yeah, probably my my oldest published piece. Um, yeah. um I just you know, when you think Namor, you think um, Bill Everett. Um, and you yeah. know, Namor has always been kind of one of those characters that I really enjoy reading with this kind of arrogance and pompous attitude, but you you always root for him as well. So and you know, this is one of the most interesting relationships in, I think, Marvel Comics, Doom and Namor's, uh, how they respect each other and they kind of have alliances at times. Um, so definitely happy to add, you know, uh, a piece by, you know, Everett um, of, of yeah. Namor Doom early on. Marcus says he sees no villains on this piece. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, sure. You know, Dr. Doom's only killed and murdered uh, hundreds uh, over the years, but uh, <laughs> he's definitely not a villain. Just misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can hear everybody in prisons all across the globe saying, I was just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Tuska and Everett, you love it. You sure do. Namor is asking Doom to smell his finger. <laughs> I like that. I like that heart. Good one. Imperious Rex, yeah, absolutely. No, it's great, and I, I really love Doom's mask here. Yeah, looks looks super super cool. Really love that. So yeah, very very cool piece. And and like you were saying, probably the oldest piece, and a very rare older piece because you're not usually going even remotely that far back on your artwork. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 really neat. I like that. Uh, Tricky Trapster in the house. What's up, dude? uh what he says what a great page it certainly is yeah absolutely now marcus wants to say no different than any other world leader <laughs> yeah but some most world leaders don't haven't murdered with their own hands and raid blasts coming out of their like gauntlets and stuff you know <laughs> so yeah i don't know i don't know uh <laughs> oh look at that Karen, the only one who actually bothered to read the dialogue on that page. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got to say, you're right, Karen. It's one of the cool things, too, when you, you get a cool page to look at and it's got great dialogue on it, you know? That's always fun because they don't always have great dialogue. Sometimes it's just like, eh, whatever, you know? But when it's got cool dialogue, yeah, that, that adds to the fun of, of, of having it and looking at it, you know? So, um, yeah, great observation there, Karen. Uh, look at that, Kavi, my buddy Kavi in the house. Happy Mother's Day to Vivian. Happy I hope she's still Thank here. <laughs> but uh, and I'm all right too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I Pat, you got to be polite to me just because you know you're 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 speaking to my wife. But I appreciate it, dude. John's collection is amazing. Good to see him. There you go. Appreciate. Oh, thanks, it. Kavi. Appreciate the kind words. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course you're gonna. Know. Yeah, exactly. Laugh, laugh it up, mofo. <laughs> Doom's not evil. TJ says he's just drawn that way. Nice, Jessica Rabbit. Nice. I like that. Very good one. All right, everyone. Let's get to the next piece. We gotta keep it moving here, as the time is waning. Because who knows? We at this point may not be able to have chat time after. But uh, yeah, let's move to the next one. Uh, more modern villain, but well. To me, he's more modern, but I guess now he's probably 30-whatever years old. But this is a piece uh, from the modern era, of course. X-Men Legends, number 10, page 1. The um, credits and title splash by Dan Jurgens with uh, Scott Hanna Inks. If you love this character, this is a killer splash, John. Oh, my God. Right? Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Mr. Sinister is probably a tie after Magneto with Apocalypse as my second favorite X-Men villain. Wow, um, really? Wow. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been a fan of his um, since way back Mutant Massacre and Inferno. Um, I remember, like, I grew up in Baltimore, so I would have to walk, like, 30 minutes to my closest comic shop and oh. you know, walking back with those Inferno issues in the, the hot summer and just reading them so definitely i have to thank james siegel for this one i i had reached out to um dan jurgens and uh, for the piece and um you know he said it would have to go through the the dealer 
So this was probably, you know, six, seven months of communication. And then finally, he said the dealer would be selling it at Heroes Con. So James was kind enough to kind of uh, reach out and, and pick this up for me at Heroes Con. Oh, that's so cool. Definitely that, big thanks to James. So this is one piece. I do probably want to frame right over top of the wine case. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, yeah. What better place would there be for this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. Oh, that's good. And that's very good of you, James. Of course, James, very helpful. Well, listen, James is doing, um, James is doing what, well, listen, it's just my opinion. Don't get mad at me, people who don't do this. Um, James is doing what I've always said that all, collector, all collectors should try to do, at least make some level of effort to do, which is when you come into to the hobby um, and, you know, you seek out some help. So not everybody does, but if you seek out help and you find people that are, are, are helping you uh, navigate your way through the hobby as you're, you're a newer collector, you know, once you've gained a little bit more, um, how we say, experience, just return the favor and and help others also in return you know what with what with whatever they may need whether it's you know oh pointing them to uh, oh hey you know there's a piece i think you might like over there or hey i'm going to be at this con let me pick up that piece for you if you're not going to be you know whatever um i think everybody should 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 partake in that and it makes the hobby a much nicer uh, and more fun place to be in and so yeah Good, good on you, uh, James. Because James not not been in the hobby for that long, right? He's what? What is it, James? I don't I don't know if he's still here anymore. Five to seven years, something like that, right? So, um, you know, yeah, and James he's... and I started around the same time. I want to say like 2016. Um, okay. And oh James, yeah, so that's about seven years. Yeah, who you had on a couple weeks back? He was he reached out to me and James early on. Um, kind of extended the olive branch and he used to write this column called OA aficionados. Uh, ah, of course. Yeah. Dick, Dick. Oh yeah. So yeah. Like you said, it, it really helps because us as new collectors, it's been what, seven years now and you know, it's pay it forward, right? Like Dickie reached out to us and it's only right that we kind of keep on passing the torch and um, that's how the hobby grows. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm glad to see James is still here. Um, so he heard that and yeah, absolutely. Uh, pay it forward for sure. You know, absolutely. Yeah, more people should do it because a shocking amount of people, I think it's still the minority. Like a lot of people just, yeah, they're in it kind of for themselves. And, um, although that may be more, a uh, a factor of, you know, a lot of people, if, like, I guess if you're not really social in the hobby, I could see how you probably don't do that sort of thing because, well, why would you, if you're not really socializing and you don't really have contact with other collectors on any sort of regular basis, you know, so I can kind of understand that. But if you are social, yeah, man, you should try to help other people. Absolutely. For sure. Scott M says, Hey all, what's up? Thanks for dropping in Scott. And all right, everybody, let us move to the next piece. Um, another revisiting an artist we've seen already. Check this out. X deaths of Wolverine number one cover. Uh, no, we didn't. Ma Ma Mahmoud Asrar. No, this is the first one. Um, yeah, only a couple of years old here. Um, but yeah, savage, savage uh, saber tooth uh, standing over the potentially dead uh, Wolverine. Very, very cool, dude. And by the way, before you say anything, uh, John, I just want to say, and I guess I should say, I'm saying this to everybody who, who who knows this. I didn't know until I saw this piece. I didn't know that Mahmoud knew how to how to how to paint I, I mean yeah i just thought he I, I don't think i'd ever seen him do painted stuff before this so that's kind of cool for me you know yeah definitely he um he, he's more of a pen pen and ink guy but uh he does paint it pieces every now and then you know mikhail has a killer i think apocalypse piece um painted by him as well um but i follow him on social media and, and it's pretty cool because he kind of post progress shots, uh, work in progress shots of the yes. painted pieces he does. Um, and I was looking for a great saber tooth example. And, you know, this one has probably one of the best rivalry in comics with Wolverine in it. So definitely uh, glad to add this one to the collection. Yeah, it's killer. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but my eyes, the first thing my eyes go to <laughs> is that savage crazed look on saber tooth's face like the eyes especially you know it's like the tiniest part of the of the of the piece 
the two eyeballs, but that's exactly where my eyes go right away. The first thing my eyes go to is actually the the crazed look in, in the in the eyes, and then my eyes go down to the rest of it. But yeah, really, really beautiful. Yeah. And uh, Kavi thinks so as well. Very freaking cool. Yeah, absolutely. And there you go. See, yeah, I got Karen's backing me up now. Love is crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy eyes from Orange is the New Black had nothing on Sabretooth on this cover. <laughs> For anybody who uh, ever watched the Orange is the New Black. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is what I also want to ask. So Kavi says you can view it upside down and it's just as cool. Now, is that on purpose? Because I noticed that the logo is also upside down. You can it can be read upside down, and so I what I wasn't sure like what's up with that. Yeah, I, I, I now you make me interested. I, I'm gonna have to look at upside down. I haven't flipped it really. Oh, so you didn't know either. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can see X deaths of Wolver. Well, except the weird thing is, if, if you flip the comic upside down. You can suddenly read X deaths of. Oh, oh, sorry. It says X lives of when it's upside. Yeah. When you flip it over, it's X lives of. But then but then Wolverine would be upside down. So that's kind of weird. I don't know what they were thinking with that design. That's odd, but cool, but interesting. I'm curious now. I'd like to find out what, what they were doing with that. Okay. Uh, he's taking out a kidney to give to a transplant patient. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't know. He's got a... He's got a you know, he's got to put it into one of those uh, freezer, those little freezer packed uh, carry cases. And, and 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 even then, he's probably got like 50 to 60 minutes tops to get it to the hospital. Uh, definitely beautiful, man. Yeah, absolutely beautiful piece. Very lovely. Yes, heart, wonky logo. It looks interesting with heart, but like I said, when you flip it upside down like they wanted you to, I guess that's why they put the X lives of upside down. When you flip that, you can only read X lives of upside up, but then the, the Wolverine word would be upside down. So yeah, I don't get it. It's just weird. So yeah, not sure what's up with that, but cool, cool painting. And that's all that matters. And uh, we get to see it and share in, uh, <laughs> share in the beauty with you, John. Um, okay, everybody, let's go to the next piece. And from there, we will jump to another painted piece and a really, really cool piece. For this one, I've made three slides. So first I'll do a side by side and here, this is for a print, okay? So this is a, again, the awesome Paolo Rivera. It is Fastball Special, a Sideshow Collectibles print from 2019. Um, obviously the original art on the left, the print on the right. And then I've got a image here with just the print so you could see it larger. And then one last one of the original art. And I think that's what we'll leave it on and let John tell us a little bit about this wonderful acquisition. Yeah, because that's that's killer stuff. And who doesn't who doesn't love a fastball special, right? No, absolutely. This is, uh, you know, I picked this up along with that Fantastic Four uh, Mythos piece um, from Paola. And again, one of my favorite painters, um, just, you know, the lighting detail on Wolverine and Colossus kind of really stood out to me. You get that dynamic feel. And probably, you know, one of my favorite uh, Wolverine renditions, you know, you mentioned the fastball special is one of those trademarks. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, just a, just a beauty. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, fastball special and the fastball, the, the, the baseball is coming up right into your face here. Um, so close to you and yet, you know, he managed to get, you know, the full body in. Um, yeah. And I, I love his, I love, uh, Paolo's work, his painted work because he's, he's got a very painterly style, like the old school style. Um, more like how mid, uh, mid 20th century illustrators used to paint, um, rather than the more, you know, contemporary look where, where the paint is really, really smoothed out. Um, here you can sort of see the brush strokes creating the different shading in the yellows, for example, or on um, the skin tones on the arms, or even Colossus's, um, Colossus's, um, you know, the, the, how, how he made the, if you look at the leg, especially the, 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 his left leg, it looks like it's worn metal, you know, 
yeah. um, rather than the usual shiny metal uh, that we usually see them draw. It. Yeah, it's just fantastic. And uh, of course, got to mention, also love, you know, who doesn't love images? And a lot of people do. Who doesn't love images of the X-Men characters and shattered, destroyed sentinels all over the floor in the background? That's <laughs> It really is a popular motif for people. I got to say that, you know? So, yeah, yeah, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. And what else do we have here? Uh, we got some, uh, co a bunch of comments. Sorry, everybody. I'm a little bit behind here. Let me show the wows. Mark says that there's a Neil Adams quality to Saber. Oh, okay, I'm the last one, the Sabretooth's expression. Well, it's the really realistic, crazed look, I guess, what it is, you know? And, yeah, Hart, Hart said it even before I did. Uh, dig the Sentinel in the background. Yeah, one of my favorite in John's collection for sure. Um, Thank you. Yeah, like right over the plate. <laughs> like the fastball special, uh, uh, like the fastball special in X Men One Thirty Seven. Well, I think we all love them, all of them. Fastball special is iconic as the triple Lindy. Nice, Marcus. <laughs> you think after all these years, the Colossus would have developed a secondary pitch? Exactly, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever said that. Exactly, man. You, what, 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 yeah, exactly, Colossus. What's up? Uh, what's up? Where, where, where's the split fingered fastball, man? Oh, that's funny. Also, the 142 issue choked me up. <laughs> uh, extra points for the Wolby costume. And it looks like, what do you mean, Steampunk Colossus? Well, it's pretty much the same costume, that classic costume. But, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. Really, really, uh, really, really dig that one. And, and, yeah, so happy you included that one. Um, yeah, I, I, I imagine that's that's... For you, John, I can't. I don't think I could say, "Oh, that, that's got to be one of your favorites." Because for you, you're probably like, "Well, yeah, but a lot of them are my favorites, right?" <laughs> no, definitely one of my favorites. Wolverine again, him and Magneto okay. are my two favorite characters. Oh, okay, okay. So it's 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 up there more than the rest. It's up there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And as well, it should be. As well, it should be. All right, everybody. So uh, with that, we'll lead into number seventeen, which is another really cool piece that a lot of us really remember. Um, way back in the day, and it's for me, it's killer because any lover of Hulk and Wolverine, 181, that whole battle, there's something magical about Hulk and Wolverine going at it. For some reason, it ca it has captivated the comic book world for 50 years, you know, or, or almost 50 years, 48 years, or whatever it's been. Um, and anything with those two characters getting together, and especially if it if it, it includes the Wendigo. Um, yeah, people love it. So check this out, everybody. Um, this one again, everyone, I've done a three slide production so you could see it quickly side by side. And, um, of course it's from what if number seven, the second series from the 1989, um, page two and three of the issue. Um, Liefeld, Rob Liefeld, uh, with Scott Williams on inks, but Jim Valentino did the layouts, some, which I'm sure a lot of people don't remember. Um, so that's kind of a, an interesting little uh, uh, tidbit there. Um, and another thing I just wanted to show you guys because here, we're going to, I'll show you close-ups. So here's the published version as it looked in, um, in a close-up. And I'll leave it here on the original art. Um, you guys watching, you may notice there's a difference between this and this. And that's the fact that it appears Scott Williams originally ended up putting a ton of um well what it, it, it to me it appears to be either and and i guess john you'll you'll tell us because you have the original but it looks to me like he put spatter plus zipatone is that what he did is that what that is just ink spatter um you, you know i reached out because when i posted this piece um uh the question came up was this zipatone or not so i i had reached out to scott and it'd been so long that he's done this piece um so he asked me to send him high you know resolution scans and i sent it to him and he was kind enough to kind of say it was a specific inking technique with spatter that he did back then oh. and interestingly enough um i think marvel they um they removed some of that spatter and they actually made the image a little bit more open. Um, so yes. there was a production piece that came with this piece as well. So this is the original art, but there was a more uh, clearer open production piece that accompanied this piece. So. Yes. Okay. I, I, I figured there had to be 
because I, so I was thinking, okay, if I couldn't tell, I had a feeling again, usually I can, I, you know, I'll spot a zip a tone right away. Um, with this piece, with the spatter included, it was throwing me off. Right. I was thinking, obviously there's spatter. That's, that's, I had no doubt about that. That was obvious, but I couldn't, because of the spatter being there, I could not tell if there was also zip a tone mixed in, or if it was just some weird spatter effect. And the fact that the, the color version, look at this again, everybody, the editors decided to remove it all, right? That's what made me think, okay, there might be another statted piece that's in, that got involved here, you know? Um, so yeah, very, very interesting. And yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I mean, you know, um, we hear about the, the image seven, how much in demand their, their artwork is and, you know, to have kind of, um, prominent artists like Lifefield and Valentino and then Scott involved in this piece. And even Scott taking the time to, you know, answer my question, you know, he could have just ignored my email, but, um, you know, it, yeah. it, it speaks volumes, uh, that they make time to interact with the fellow collectors. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, yeah, so Tricky is saying that someone changed Hulk, Hulk's left arm in the color. Oops, sorry, everybody. That's the next piece in the color version. And here, let's take a look at that like this and go back and forth. Yeah, it, 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 in the color version, it, which is which is bizarre because I would have expected the opposite. I would have expected maybe the original to have the arm you see in the colored version and that they would then correct it to this one because in the colored version, it looks like this, this one sort of, it's this bizarre, this one, the upper arm is this one fat chunk and it's kind of squared off. It's not roundish, especially the tricep underneath. It, it's just bizarre. And then it, it goes into this tiny, tiny little forearm. So it's, it's weird to me. This looks way more, closer to you know closer to, to normal anatomy agree um, yeah right like then this one this this it's so bizarre but yeah um again i guess that change was made on that um the aforementioned um statted piece you know um but yeah cool and 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 uh, um, I, very memorable so i think a lot of us love that so uh yeah mikhail says scott scott williams is fantastic exactly yeah exactly bizarre bicep yeah yeah exactly you guys got it so all right, everybody, um, let us move to the next piece. And with that, uh, I did a sneaky peek. We'll do it again side by side. Here we go. And I guess this is all. I, I guess I, I could have, here, let me, sorry, let me get rid of parts comment. I could have left it this one, but I still wanted to show um, this. And because it's just a, more of a close up of the original art plus this. And of course, we'll do the requisite. Uh, <laughs> discotheque uh, effect um i don't know what should we do leave it on this but anyways it's x-men second coming number two um double uh, page splash seven and eight from already 13 years ago so that's killer but uh, yeah what do you got to say uh, about this one man yeah so you know like i mentioned um uncanny x-force and court of vows were kind of the two titles that really ignited my interest again in comics so um this is actually their first appearance uh, towards the tail end of this X-Men second coming story arc where um, kind of Wolverine assembles, you know, this team behind Cyclops' back. And I, I kind of just love the roster from the get-go. You know, you got Deadpool, Wolverine, Psylocke, Phantom X, and Archangel. And it was like a 30-issue run, uh, probably one of my favorite modern arcs. So I kind of like the over-the-wall weaponry that um, Greg Land um uh, included in this piece. Ham and Jay, I think, just mesh real well together. Yeah. And this is one of those pieces where kind of perseverance pays off. Um, I wasn't the original buyer. The original buyer lived in the UK, and uh, I remember messaging him probably just once a year just to follow up. Um, oh, yeah. Every time he's like, no, I'll take like a ridiculous offer. And then finally, I think uh, he was in a situation where he's ready to move it, so he sent me a message back, and then I was oh, wow. ready. Yeah. I, I love I love uh, I love hearing about um, stories like that, you know, because I mean, oftentimes people will say, yeah, yeah, let me know if you ever part with it, you know, and, you know, people are like, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to bother, you know, um, sure. so it's nice when you hear that people 
ultimately did um, get back to you that way. Um, of course, it does help that you were persev like you persevered enough to where you would think, okay, at least once per year, I'll just check in in a nice way to see, yeah. you know, without put being pushy about it. And I guess it worked in your, and it doesn't always work, but in your case it did. And that's, that's to your credit to you, man. So congrats. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. All right, everyone. We're making great time. doesn't look like we're going to have uh, time to chat, but uh, we're, we're at least we're going to see all the art and that's good. And, and we've all, we, we, we've still, we've been able to still have some good laughs together and, and uh, you know, both John and I get, have, have had time to say something about each piece and, you know, I've been, I've still been able to interact with, with all of you in the chat a lot more than I expected to. So, so I'm happy. Um, all right. So let us get to the next piece. That is piece number 19. And this is another commission painted. Check this one out, everybody. This is the Wolverine by Gabriele Delotto from 2010, which was then used, um, published um, in a Delotto uh, sketchbook. That I guess it's one of those sketchbooks, uh, John. Uh, you can confirm for me that he sells like at conventions. Yeah, it was uh, for fan only. It was one of his uh, earlier sketchbooks. Um, okay. And I this one I was not the original commissioner. I I got it from the original commissioner, um, and you know the the silver and black Wolverine X Force costume. Always I, I was a big fan of it, and Del Delato's three issue miniseries X Force Sex and Violence is probably one of my my favorite arcs of all time. Um, so yeah, when I saw this, um, the original commissioner was from Italy. Um, he had this piece and he actually took some progress shots of uh, Gabrielle working on the piece as well. Um, so yeah, definitely thrilled to, to add this piece. Gabrielle's one of my favorite painters, very unique talent um, and just love kind of the the battle damage Wolverine rendition he made. Yeah, it's fantastic. And and I just want to just pop pop back out here really quick. Guys, I was just giving you an update because I was keeping my eye on the clock. Um, this isn't the last piece. It's almost the last piece. Uh, I was just saying, you know, based on what time it was, we may not have time to chat. Or we may have a few minutes to chat, but this is not the last piece. So it's stick, stick around, stick around. It's not the last one. Um, and yeah, and I got to show everybody this because the, I took the time to... to make this extra scan as well you can see the same thing i just showed you but also with an extra picture of gabriel doing the uh, actual piece painting it so that's really really neat that you have that john no, absolutely thank you for uh shout out to i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing him his name right but fede f-e-d-e -E, for agreeing apart with the piece Oh yeah, yeah. I would. Well, that's that's like a nickname. So I would I would say Fede would be the yeah. Well, that would be the same, the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. So very very cool. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Really really neat. And uh, I never read any comics with him in that in that silver costume, but I have to admit, it's really cool. I I, I also like it. Yeah, it's uh, there's something about it. it. It's a it's a nice fit for the character. Those that color scheme, you know. Oh, I'm gonna have to mail you the. The mini series trade paperback. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that I appreciate it. That's cool. But maybe at some point I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll order it. I'll, I'll check if my local library has it. Maybe I can, you know, yeah. Um, and then if you say it really sparked your interest of rereading again, that that says something to me. You know, I'm like, really, wow, like not something that I would have expected a mutant book to do for somebody, but. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. No, oh, that's that's cool. And that's was that the series that started from number one around that time or was no, it already going like at 200 something or what i'm confusing x factor with x force sorry uh, that, that yeah, this, this is x force right x force yeah yes okay 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 yeah 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 because no x force series ever went very long in numbering right no 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 okay okay that's it okay and so the, the this series that you loved how long was it how many issues do you remember? So his silver and black costume came much earlier. I think I want to say 2008, 2009, but the series okay. with that five team member yeah. wasn't until like 2012, I think. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, stop. Always fun to have the pick of the artist in the action. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, well, he had it and yeah, why not? I figured I'd show it, you know? 
That's kind of neat. And um, Mark says, I know how you feel. There's a video of Assad painting my Wonder Woman. Yeah, there you're cool. Yeah, that, that, there you go. Like, that's even cooler because it's moving pictures of him, you know, doing your, your piece. So, yeah, very cool. All right, everyone, let us get to the next piece. And for this one, we hit a villain that we have seen already, but it is one of John's favorites. So check this out. X-Men Messiah Complex, number one cover by the super hot, as it seems, as the, the never stops to be hot Mark Silvestri and Joe Weems from all the, my, another one that I can't believe already back to 2007. That's wild, man. Yeah, I know. Um, again, super thrill. Mark Silvestri one of my favorite uh, artists and, you know, his involvement with creating Mr. Sinister. It was only fit to pick up a piece by him. Um, so, you know, I, I read Messiah Complex uh, after the fact, I wasn't reading comics actively when it was originally released, but definitely a, one of the my favorite modern X-Men arcs. I kind of just love the portrayal of Sinister and a bonus with uh, Wolverine. I think Mark did a wonderful rendition of Mystique, too. So definitely happy to, for this piece. Yeah, and uh, Marcus wants us all to know Cyclops is the real villain here. <laughs> Mar Mar Marcus, uh, you know, he's not the friendliest guy towards Cyclops. He has a history of animosity with Cyclops, it seems, you know? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, see, now it's me dropping knowledge, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Nick, for sure, man. That's, that's absolutely a great cover. Yeah, really, really cool. And uh, another wow here. And uh, one more time from Karen, everybody. Karen is still with us. He hung around for the entire episode. Wow. So, so thankful, Karen. Great, great, great to have you here uh, for the duration. Really, really cool of you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, everybody, really, really cool piece. And from there, um, we've got one last piece. And then we might have a few minutes to, for, for you guys to throw out a couple of questions to John, all right? Sure. Um, so this one is the last one because, once again, uh, John's favorite villain, his favorite artist. What else would I leave as the last piece? Check it out, everybody. Magneto, Jim Lee, 2018. Oh, <laughs> Take it away, John. Yeah, so definitely a very personal piece of mine. Um, you know, when I arranged this commission with Albert, um, the, the plan was to pick it up from Jim in person when they attended this art show. Um, in uh by lax uh near los angeles so when i i came you know um, unfortunately jim was unable to make the event but i think between albert and jim's friend john um owner of torpedo comics i'm not sure which one both of them kind of communicated with jim and then they told me that jim would be willing to meet me later that afternoon um to pick it up if i was willing to drive like to a starbucks closer to his place so oh you know, i was awesome. able to uh, I was like, absolutely. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> nah, 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 Jim, you, 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 why don't you come and, and, and just drive out to see me instead? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're going to say that. Uh, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. I was, you know, Jim treated me to coffee. We sat for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, and there were like a few items I had that he was willing to sign, you know, for free. We talked about the piece, how long it took him to make it. His, uh, you know, it, it was just very memorable. Um, definitely one of my favorite pieces. Love just Jim's rendition of Magneto ever since his Uncanny X-Men run and then his X-Men 90s run as well. Um, and then I uh, had it colored by Arif Prianto. So, yeah. Ah, just, just okay. really, yeah. Well, there's the answer, Marcus. Prianto. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I had... Um... I, did you did you have him listed on? Do you know if you have him listed in the listing on, in your gallery? Because I would have mentioned it. Like I I I, I made a point to mention it uh, for the other piece that uh, for the uh, the Baron Zemo piece. But I maybe I wonder if, if you didn't have it listed or or did I just forget to do that? I think I love this piece so much that I I uh, posted the color piece like a separate post like later okay. on. I got it colored, and that's probably when I credited the. the oh, color. I see. Okay. I see. Yeah, exactly. Jim could have just sent his assistant. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like, here you go. Yeah. Thanks. Trade. Trade. All right. Later. You know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. No, that's fantastic, man. What a what a what a phenomenal collection. And like I said, it was so that's part of the reason that that uh, you know I can tell just from us you know trading comments here and there online whatever. I know you were a nice guy, 
was like, I, I knew I, I'd want to have you at some point on. And also because I really love the fact that you're a, a, a not only dedicated in what you're, you're collecting, but the fact that it's the opposite of what most people do, you know, rather than the heroes, the villains, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool. It's just, and you're not the only guy, you're not the only guy who I've seen do that. But again, you're very few and far between most people. For most people, it's hero first, then the villain, or at the very least, both of them together, you know? Sure. So, sure. so yeah. Um, but guys, uh, with that, we have officially four minutes to go before it's the time for John to, to, to go. John, can you take a, a question or two? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, thanks for coming in, everyone. Yeah. yeah. So if there's anything that anybody else wants to ask, I'm shocked that uh, 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 Stanley, where's Stanley? Oh, my God. Oh, that's true. He doesn't know it's going to be a two-hour show tonight. So he's <laughs> he's going to tune in like 45 to 50 minutes from now telling us to extend the show for another hour. Yeah, that's that's where Stanley is right now. Um, but yeah, if there's nothing else, guys, um, then maybe we'll just call it. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was a super, super fun, really fun topic, especially and a lot of great fun pieces with great artists, great character selection. Um, yeah, it, it's it's um, I wish we could hang out and shoot the breeze. Sure. Because right. as everybody knows, I just love to, to shoot the breeze. And that's why, you know, as you guys we see, I've just proven it for the first time in 11 months that I've done this. I've just proven why my shows go three hours or three hours plus. Right. Because we didn't talk as much as we normally do. And we were able to do it in two hours. But I'd rather talk. And I think I think most of the regulars that come in also would rather shoot the breeze. It's just a way to relax and hang out. So but hey, all of you people in the in the gallery. Who, who do watch and those of you on rewind let me know feel free to let me know rewinders on in the comment section down below you guys uh, who are here live let me know in the comments would you like me to try to get my episodes down concisely to two hour blocks or would you rather we do it like we always do and not have a time uh, limit to worry about let me know yeah look at nick see yeah exactly wow such a short show <laughs> Nick, you must have missed it earlier. It's because at the, at the top of the hour, uh, top, whatever, top of the show, uh, I said that John has things to do. He's got a family. He's, he's, he can't stick around longer than a couple of hours. So, yeah, we've got the, the time limit. Um, Karen says, thank you, John. Awesome collection and interview. Thanks, Karen. Thank you for sitting through the whole thing. <laughs> yes, me too. Thank you, John, for thanking her on my behalf. And, and we're looking forward to having Karen on eventually for another concise two-hour episode. Um, yeah, Rick says, Meg magnificent on that one on that last piece uh yeah exactly rich too early for stanley to be here uh rick wants to know a Tulsa doom can, uh, commission next i don't think you're into Tulsa doom do you even know who Tulsa doom is that's my question to you uh john now that no, i see you no yeah you don't even know who it is no okay that's what i figured okay <laughs> it's a, a conan uh call conan villain Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not exactly superhero, so it, it you know, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, cheers to you, Jeff. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, oh, look how sweet she, you are. Thank you, Karen. I think Vivian might have left already. Although I don't know, I didn't see her say goodbye, but maybe she did and I missed it, or maybe she fell asleep. I, I, I don't know. But thank you, thank you, Karen. Let me know. I didn't even know. Are you a mom yourself by any chance? Because if you are, obviously, I wish you all the best. Happy Mother's Day. But if you are a mom, I would think you probably wouldn't have been here for two hours. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you'll let me know. Um, CJ says, great gallery, John. Hey, CJ. And uh, orders hide. Not me. It's all about the art. A great show, everyone. Thank you. Orders hide. Scott says, Ruben need, just needs to <laughs> shut the fuck up and show the art. <laughs> well... I respect the fact that you're at least you you answered my question and when everybody else probably hasn't. Um, but I'm going to take that, Scott, as them wanting me to just let the shows go as long as they go. Uh, great show. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Everybody, don't forget to check out Nick on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific on YouTube.com slash VEXP. And four-hour work for you, Marcus. That's good. Okay, I appreciate it. Learn how to edit out clips. Um <laughs> Oh yeah, for the rewind people, yeah, but it's it's so it's so time consuming. I'm just like, you know what? They have the power to fast forward, so forget it. Why would I add it just to you know for the for the rewinders? Now, nah. I love your rewind viewers, by the way, but you know, 
it doesn't take much effort to just fast forward through this stuff. Whatever you don't, you know, want to watch, you just fast forward. So, uh, did miss it. Well, there you go. Okay. Uh, just, uh, buddy, wasn't anything, uh, center today. Hey, what? Um, thanks. Okay. Oh, Thank you. you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming late to the, to the comments. Sorry. Sorry. Um, great to see more collectors promoted. Yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, love you, Karen. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, everybody, please, please remember, um, you see Karen's name there, Karen's Pages. It's a brand new channel here on YouTube that she just started, and she is a comic book and original art collector, only has three videos, pre-recorded material, 10, 12 minutes uh, per video, so very easily uh, digested. Um, please check her out, and if you like her, her content, please do subscribe to it, help her out, and hit likes on all her videos. Please do that. Thank you. Um, and we'll learn more about Karen um, a little bit, hopefully in the not too distant future when she comes on and graces us with her presence here in the studio, which will be fun. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, so Vivian, she was here. So thank you, Comic Books NYC. Oh, thank you, Karen. There you go. Okay, so you were here. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Han. I'll see you very soon in a few minutes, probably. JC, ah, oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate you as always. And thank you for answering. Yes, a mom and a stepmom. Well, happy, happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you, especially on Mother's Day for you being here. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Fantastic collection. Thank you, Andy. For sharing. Yep, awesome. Thank you for being here, Andy. Appreciate it. Show needs to be three hours. We need feed. Well, that's why they tend to go three hours, right? Number one Marvel fan. Uh, oh, no, 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 Scott Wingo. Uh, well, you can answer while I'm saying goodbye here. He, we're all, we've gone two minutes over now, and he's, he has to leave, Scott. Uh, um, Mark, Mark Silvestri. Yeah, there you go. Mark Silvestri, Showtime, let the good times roll. Mark, is there a glut for punishment? Uh, missing Karen, there you go. Well, oh, she was here. You're already missing her. Come on, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> great show. Yeah, thank you, Rick. I appreciate you as always. Thank you as always for all the support, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you, uh, as much as, 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 as or more than anybody else. I've been here since the beginning, so thank you. Really appreciate you. Thank you again, Karen. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my pleasure. Believe me. I, I hope whatever I can do to help um, the community, we have to help each other. So that's what I believe. And, and I hope this helps even if just a little bit and you get the the, 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 the ball rolling, you know. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Great art. John from TJ. Uh, good night to you. Hard thanks again for tuning in. It's good to see you as always. we got to chat privately sometime. It's been a while. And have a good week, everyone. Yes, absolutely. Come on, nothing else on TV. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody. I'm going to leave you um, with the um, slide for next week's show. Please tune in. Um, you may or may not know my uh, next week's guest. It's going to be uh, Jason. Uh, you guys know him as JH. Here we go. Oh, by the way, um, can you give me another minute, John? Yeah, and Jason's awesome, by the way. I'll definitely be tuning in. There we in. go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, um, yeah, just stick, stick around uh, for a minute till we'll, we'll, when we get off the air, if you don't mind, John. Sure. Um, sure. All right. Appreciate it. And um, everybody, yeah, please, I'm going to leave you with this. Please come back next week. I put up the avatar. So you can see Jason's avatar. That's how you would probably recognize him. That's how you would know him. Um, it's right there under his name on that slide. And um, yeah, he'll be coming in. I've been I've been trying for since I since I was in the process of opening this channel. Um, I already had been speaking to Jason to try to have him on as a guest. And he could only do it now. So it's been a, basically a year in the making. So I'm really, really excited to have him. So um, thanks, everybody. Thank you so, so much for tuning in tonight. Again, thank you uh, as well, CJ. Really appreciate it. Thanks. To all of you who come in and make the show as fun as it always is. Um, James, James still here. Oh, nice. Looking forward to that one. Exactly. Thank you so much, James. Thanks for popping in again, as always. Really appreciate you. Uh, all the artists that Ruben loves. What do you mean? What are you talking about? All the artists that Ruben loves. Um, but yeah, thank you, Marcus, as always. Really appreciate you too, dude. And uh, yeah, that's it. Everybody, thank you once again. And uh, we will catch you next week. Um, after, don't forget, next week is Comic Art Live, uh, otherwise known as CAFCON on the Comic Art Fans website. So um, my show will be on at the usual time after the CAFCON. All right, so be here for that. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.